Okay, excellent. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Vanessa and I am an instructor at Sippin' and Painting Hamden. And we're really happy that you're here today on our Zoom class and um, that you guys are all uh, ready and excited to paint. I hope you guys are all ready and excited. I know you're muted, but you can just do like a silent, yeah, okay, at your little uh, desk. <laughs> So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basics of acrylic painting. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, this is what we're doing. Please don't be intimidated. You guys will be able to do this. No problem. And it'll look just fine. Okay. Um, this painting is very, um, it's got a lot of details, but not a lot of color. So if you look at it, you've got your, you know, whites and browns and your sky and water, and that's basically it. Um, so you should have a paint kit that was sent to you, and my paint kit might be different from what you got. So if somebody who is prepared and has like all of their paints out, if you wouldn't mind just letting me know what colors you have, and then I will kind of follow what you have, if that's okay. Um, any volunteers that can unmute themselves real quick? Hello. Uh, we have Okay. Yeah. Yellow, black, yellow, black, white. Okay, so you've got yellow, black, blue, and white. Is that what I heard? And red. And red. Okay. No brown was added to your kit. Is that correct? No, I just have five. No brown. Okay, so primary colors plus black and white. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yay, we get to make brown. So um, that'll be a fun challenge and uh, an easy one, really. Okay, so um, great. Um, all right, well, just real quick, a, a little bit about the paint studio. Um, you know, COVID has just taken over the world and um, we've had to close our doors. So the Zoom classes has been a really critical part of us staying afloat. So thank you guys for that. Um, as for me, I've been a uh, instructor at Sippin' and Painting for, gosh, five years, I think. And I work full-time, I'm a graphic designer. Um, I design like merchandise and um, glassware and things for different theme parks and um, museums and that kind of thing. Um, so I work solely on a computer all day. And then when I have the opportunity, I get to paint um, with Sippin' and Painting, which I absolutely love. Um, and one of the reasons I love doing this is because I get to teach people who aren't experienced in painting how um, unintimidating and how easy it really can be. Um, so that's something I really enjoy doing. And um, what I'd like to do at this time is uh, go over our supplies. So whoever was uh, just telling me what colors you have, can you also tell me what brushes you have and if they look like this, a small, medium, and a large? Yeah, we have the the pack of five and then oh, okay. this one. Can you see it? Mm, let me see. Let's take a look here. Who's, oh, 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 wow. You guys got, ooh, nice. You got a lot of brushes there. Okay, cool. So um, I'm just going to talk about like my brushes is small, medium, and large, okay? You have a lot of brushes and you're more than welcome to use those at your discretion You'll as we move on through the class, you'll kind of get to know your brushes and be like, I love this one, or oh no, this one's no good. I don't want to use that one. So you'll feel that um, as you progress, all right? But I'm just going to say small, medium, and large. So you'll want to find in your brush pack uh, the biggest brush, the smallest detail brush, and then some brush that's like in between those two. And that's what we'll kind of start with, okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, so right now, I've only added blue and white to my palette. Okay, I'm just going to hold that up. Um, if you've added other, other colors already, awesome. But really, if you haven't done this yet, just do blue and white right now. Okay, we will get to the other colors later. But um, what I want to do is just add like a good, um, I would say like a I don't know, a golf ball size of white. You're gonna need a lot of white for this painting. And then like a grape size of blue, okay? You should have water. So if you don't have that, just grab yourself um, an old container, um, plastic or glass, doesn't matter. And that's gonna be your water jar to keep your brushes in when you're not using them. 
You should also grab paper towels, old towels. Um, you can use a roll of toilet paper since everybody hoarded that. You should have a lot of it, yes. You can use anything that you have um, to keep your brushes nice and um, dry in between uh, uses. So I've got my paper towels here. Sometimes I just, if you have an apron, I'll use my apron to dry off my brushes. All right, so here we go. Let's get started. We are going to start with the background and let me just adjust my um, easel here um, so that you could see the original. I'm gonna just scooch that over there and I will move my camera over so that you could see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna get out of the frame and make sure that you guys can always see what I am working on, okay? Um, <clears throat> acrylic paint is a really fast drying paint. So when you're working with it, you have some time to kind of get in there and blend and then the paint will start to dry. And then in about 20 minutes, it's completely dry. So you will not be able to blend after that. So you kind of want to keep um, track of, uh, you know, how wet or dry that paint is depending on what step. And I'll always tell you, you know, um, you know, which colors you need and, and give you plenty of time to work um, before your paint dries. Uh, or sometimes we need it to dry completely. And then I'll tell you guys, go have a drink, go walk around, take your dog outside and come back in five. So I will give you guys um, plenty of breaks so that you can um, allow your paint to dry. All right, excellent. Um, in between steps, so again, it's really important you guys are excellent about it. Everybody's muted. Um, if you have questions, I will say unmute yourself and um, ask your questions, okay? If you're wondering something, somebody else probably is too. So don't ever feel bad about asking questions. Um, I, I love when you're interactive and you talk to me so I don't feel like I'm just talking um, to myself in my closet, which is where I am right now, okay? I have a room that I've turned into my closet and art room. Um, so please do ask questions as needed. Um, all right, I think I pretty much covered all of the basics, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's load up our palettes, plates, or whatever you're using with white and blue, and we're going to start with the biggest brush that you have, whichever that might be, mine is this here, and I am um, just going to go right in and scoop up a nice generous scoop of white paint, and I'm just going to plop that onto my canvas there. So I've just added on the uh, right side there, a nice little blob of white paint. Then I'm going to immediately go into my blue and I've picked up way less blue. I don't want to, um, I really don't want to add too much blue because that's gonna make my uh, paint way too dark. So I'm going to just add a touch of it. And then what I'm gonna do is watch this, I'll hold this up a little closer. So there's my blue and my white. And what I'm doing is I'm just sort of blending those two in a little circle and then moving outward in those circles so that I can get a nice sort of a, a, a blend of clouds, right? So that's how you're going to create this really soft winter sky here. So it's basically just a bunch of little circles, but you don't want to over blend because then you're just going to get the same shade of blue. You want some of that white to be more noticeable, a little bit of um, darker blue in some spots. You're gonna repeat this process until you cover, I would say about half of your canvas. So don't do this step everybody, but I'm just going to give myself a visual of where I'm gonna stop, okay? You don't have to do that, um, the dots. That's just for you to see where you're stopping, all right? So visually, we only wanna paint half of that um, S guy. Um, again, I'm picking up blue and white, and I'm just going in nice circles to make that sky nice and soft, not too dark, all right? If you have a question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Um, one thing I really recommend is get some variety in there. You don't want that same blue. So in order to get a little extra variety, I've added extra blue to my um, big brush. And then I can just look at that, how dramatic. Just a tiny bit of that blue really makes a big difference, right? And then I'm circling, circling, getting all of that blended. Um, some of you might be 
whoa, my brush totally just fell right off there. Um, my handle fell right off. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going um, just to explain this step. Um, this is gonna take you about five to 10 minutes, just depending. If your paint starts to feel a little bit dry, use water. So you can take just a tiny drop, like just the very edge of your bristles, little bit of water and that paint's just gonna like liven right back up again for you. And just keep circling, circling, circling all the way to the edge. All right, excellent. Let me fix my brush here. If it gets too dark, add more white. Let's see, that's a very dark um, blue that I've got going there. So I would just pick up more white and just get that blended out so it's not too dark. And look at the original. If you kind of take a look at it, you can really see that there's, you know, some nice medium blues in here and then a little bit lighter here. And I'm going to show you how to get this really nice white area here. Um, that's kind of the... A horizon line. I'll show you how to do that, but definitely get some variation going in there. Uh, I was going to say, if you're painting on an easel, that means, you know, that you're a super fancy experienced artist, and if you're not painting on an easel, that means that you're just like a super fancy experienced artist too. It's totally fine. My point is either one works, don't worry about it. I sometimes like to paint on a flat surface. Um, sometimes I just pick up the, the canvas and I'll just kind of hold it on my lap. Really, it just depends. Um, it's basically just whatever your preference. For the sake of the class, it's easier for me to show it on an easel, but you don't have to have one. You can still create a great painting without it. By the end of this, your hand will get a little tired, so shake it out every now and then if you need to. Somebody's got a lot of passion with their brush, I can hear it. I like it. Sorry, I wasn't on mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hopefully everybody's heard of Bob Ross. We are huge Bob Ross fans at Sippin' and Painting Hamden and we um, have like a cardboard cutout of him. We're actually uh, licensed Bob Ross um, to teach Bob Ross classes, I should say. Uh, so that's something that we really pride ourselves in. And I hope you've heard of Bob Ross, but um, if, if you haven't, definitely check out some of his old um, shows that I believe are still on Netflix. It'll either keep you awake or help you fall asleep, just depending on your personality. But he does create some pretty amazing landscapes is what he specialized in. And a very unique um, oil, uh, oil paint technique called wet on wets. So painting on a wet canvas with wet paint. All right. So every now and then just take a look at your, your uh, brush strokes. I really want you to see lots of variation happening, okay? So I've got nice darks here, nice white, um, lighter blues up here at the top a little bit. Um, I'm really liking that. Um, it's really important to kind of take a step back and look at the big picture. 
um, just like real life. Don't focus on little details. Look at all the rest of it and what makes it beautiful, right? So take a couple of steps back every now and then if you need to and look at your painting from further back so you can really take it all in. So I feel like up here I have a lot of white. So what I've done, I'm picking up just a little bit of that blue, getting some nice dark shades in there, okay? Again, don't forget about your water. Little tiny drop of water will really help your paint move much easier on your canvas if you need to. Use a little water. All right. I think what I'll do, I'm gonna give you guys another about two minutes to finish up um, about half of your surface. Again, you're looking for variation. You're looking for some contrast. Um, you're looking to get like nice cloud uh, impressions in there by doing those little tight circles. Um, and then don't worry about the edges yet. We'll do that later, okay? Unless you know, you're a person who turns in all your reports super early or the first one in the office. If you really want to go ahead and do the edges, I understand you. Go for it. Um, everybody else, I'll give you time later on to do that. I'm going to hold that up here so you can see it. All right, one more minute, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna add in a little bit of lightness uh, right in the center here. If you are finished, um, I would like you to take your biggest brush that you're, you're using that we just uh, finished with, and you can dunk it into your water jar and then just, this is how I clean my brush, I swirl it around. Please be careful of your laptops and devices when you're doing this, we don't wanna have catastrophe happen, right? So we just wanna make sure that we get that paint off, shake it, and then you can take your paper towel or whatever you're using to dry your brushes and you just kind of pull all that excess paint off. All right, and then what I want you to do is pick up some white. Okay, so here I'm gonna just come in close, you can see, still using that big brush and I'm just gonna pick up like a, uh, I would say that looks like a raisin size amount of white. And what I want is to really um, accentuate that there's a nice big white cloud right here in the center. That's gonna pull your eye in towards the center of the canvas. So what I'm gonna do, maybe even use less than a, a raisin, maybe even just like, I don't know, an apple seed, that might be all you need. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to take that little bit of paint and you're just going to try to blend it into 
that background a little bit and let it fade out. So what I do is work, when I'm in the center, I push hard. And then as I move outward, I kind of soften up my pressure and I'm still making circles. I'm just not pushing as hard. If you have too much paint, just take um, your brush and wipe it off on a paper towel. And that'll remove some of that bulk if you've got too much going on. And so I'm just gonna continue making little circles here. Don't go for like perfect shapes. This is a formless, you know, clouds or steam and they really don't have hard, hard lines. We wanna avoid that. We wanted to make, you know, make it really soft and airy looking. So just like that. All right, let's give you guys a couple minutes to do that. Um, and then what I'd like you to do when you're done with your brush, just drop it in your water jar so it doesn't dry out. Your brushes are uh, um, really, really important in painting, the most important thing other than the paint. And if you let them sit out with paint on them, they will dry like plastic. So you wanna make sure that you keep them in the water jar while you're not using them. All right, just a couple more minutes and then we'll move forward to the next step. So I'm going to move on to the next step. We're gonna let the sky dry for a few minutes and we're going to focus our attention here on the bridge. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to fill the frame here. Um, if anybody wants to take a snapshot of this um, or a photo, yeah, with your phones, you're welcome to do that. Uh, you want to click on make sure my screen is the biggest and then you can just take a photo of it <clears throat> and um, I love that because then you can sort of zoom in on the details um, that get lost when you're not seeing it close up so I think that's a really good uh, way to reference the original all right so the bridge really if you if you were to take one of your brushes and oh, by the way, we're gonna be using our smallest brush. So whatever tiny brush that you have, that's what you wanna use. Um, but your brush is about the size of the bridge. Um, you might have a different brush. So, um, you know, you wanna add a little bit of um, length to that if, if you uh, have a smaller brush. Or you can also take your hand. Sometimes I use my hand to measure. So I would say it's like one, and a half hands, okay? That's about the size of the bridge in, in proportion to the rest of the canvas, all right? So in keeping that uh, scale, you'll be fine. Also, let's take a look at where it is. So if you look over here on the left side here, you've got about a finger away from the edge of the canvas, right? So that's a great way to sort of see where you're going to start the bridge and then maybe a half of a hand down here. I know that's confusing and I don't want you to get caught up in perfection here. Um, it's going to look like a bridge and you're gonna be just fine no matter where you put it. But if you want to kind of give yourself a little bit more, um, you know, hard instruction and, and a placement, that's what I would use. So one and a half hand bridge, a finger's uh, length inward and then about half of a hand from the bottom. So with our smallest brush, let's start making, oh yeah, we've got to mix some uh, brown here. So let's do the brown first. All right, so you've got blue and white on your canvas. I'm going to add in a little bit of yellow. Uh, don't use up all your yellow, really all you need is like less than a dime size. So I'm just gonna add about a dime size of yellow. And then I'm gonna add about a dime size of red. All right, and let's not use the black yet. We'll, we'll get back to that. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to make some brown here. So I'm taking some blue and red and look how um, small, I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit. So blue and red is are, are purple, right? That's gonna make purple. But if you add a little yellow to it, it's gonna start turning into some earth tones. And so that looks a bit greenish to me. So I'm gonna add some white. And that's looking very army green. I'm just gonna add a little more blue. So it's all about just kind of mixing primary colors until you start getting something that looks brownish. Yellow is super important. I feel like that's gonna be where it's gonna take you to a nice cool brown. I'm trying to mix this without spilling all my paint, but um, in adding that yellow and red, I'm getting a nice brown happening. I hope you guys are too. Don't stress if you're not quite there yet. Um, sometimes what I do is I can take, I'm just gonna hold that up so you can see, uh, take a second palette, maybe a second plate or something. If you don't have another palette, you can use a, a piece of foil. Um, sometimes I use a cereal box. The glossy side is great for palettes because it, the paint just stand, uh, like sticks to the top. It doesn't absorb because it's glossy. So whatever, you can use whatever as a palette. All right, I kind of like this brown. I feel like that's pretty good. Um, nice light brown. I added that white to it, so that really makes a big difference. All right. So with that, now you know how to mix the brown because you might need more to cover, um, you know, the bridge with. So now you kind of have an idea of what that recipe is for the brown. So I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to start painting this bridge. All right. So we're not going to fill the bridge in. We're just going to sort of outline it um, because that's going to, we're going to do that last. We've got trees and other things to do, but we need that placement. We need that, um, that, that focal point so that we know where everything else is going to fit. So a finger from the left and then about, yeah, I'm going to say about right here, and then about a hand's width in the bottom. So where those two are, I'm just going to add a little dot. That's this corner right here. It's a little dot. Then I'm going to measure my hand. So it's going to be like one and a half. And then I'm going to add another little dot about right there. Okay. Roughly. So this is where you want to be. Don't paint big, thick lines, just little dots for now to kind of keep us um, from making big mistakes and then you have to paint over it. So just little dots. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're going to create the bridge. So you're going to connect the dots, right? But you're gonna add that curve to it. So sometimes it's easier to hold your canvas flat, um, if you want to use your easel, you can. Otherwise, you know, you really just want to try to get that curve um, nice and clean. So I'm taking my small brush and I'm just going to make a nice little curve and connect. Don't use a lot of paint. Don't make it too thick. That's all you want right there. All right. Take your time. Don't be nervous. Just do it. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right, excellent, go for it. I'll hold mine up so that you can see it up close. Right about there. In just a little bit, I'm gonna ask everybody 
to show their work. Not yet. We'll wait another maybe 20 minutes or so. So I want you to not be afraid and show your work, but I'll tell you when, okay? So just know how to turn your camera back on and then we'll all display and we'll do that a little bit later. That's, that's fun. It's always really um, great to just see what other people are doing, okay? I love that because it kind of gives you ideas and that's what makes this like an interactive class because we all want to see what everybody else did, right? Exactly. All right, so now that we've got that first part of the bridge, we're going to uh, start creating that top area. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to tiny bit of paint. I don't want to go too dark. I'm just adding this vertical line to the bridge here. And then I'm going to add another line. This one's a little bit longer. Okay, so almost like a banner. That's what it kind of feels like. And then at the top of that, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to arch that bridge. About right here. Not too big. If you think about it, it's kind of like still the size of your finger all the way, all the way across. If you make a mistake, don't worry. We're only using a tiny bit of paint and acrylic covers acrylic. So if you make a mistake, you can always paint over it a little bit later, but that's what you kind of want, like a banner. And then when you're finished, you can just drop your small brush in the water jar. And we'll wait for everybody else to get caught up. I love that um, you're being interactive on the chat. That's awesome. I like um, Michelle's comment. My best friend walked by and said, Bob Ross is the Chuck Norris of painting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I love that. He was actually pretty... Uh, pretty tough guy what he needed to be. He was in the Air Force and he said that he used to have to yell at all of the airmen. Um, just, you know, had to lay down the rules. And he said when he was done with the Air Force that he never wanted to yell at anyone ever again. And so he just took on that really peaceful persona, like saving squirrels and painting happy trees and fluffy clouds. So I love that about him. Happy accidents. Yep. I'm seeing that in the chat. Are you going to do a quick question? Now? Yeah. If our bottom arch is a little too arched, should mm -hmm. we repaint another line or just leave it? That's a good question. Um, so <clears throat> does it feel like a bridge to you or do you think that it needs to be redone? Um, it probably the bottom arch needs to be redone. Okay. That's all right. So, um, Here's what I would do. If you don't love the uh, the shape of the line, you just do another one and just, you know, even if you have to overlap, what I'll teach you how to do is how to cover up whatever line that you don't like. In fact, I could show you real quick on mine. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah, for sure. So let's just say I don't love this line right here and I want to go up a little higher. So I'm just going to take my my brush. And I added a little water to it, just you'll find that uh, that helps a little bit. So I've added just a little bit of water and now I'm painting a line right above and I don't want this here anymore, right? So what I'll do is I, I'm gonna just take a little bit of white on my finger. I just find that's faster than getting another brush out and also brush, brushes leave brush strokes, but if you use your finger, you won't be able to see it. And then I just use it like white out. Now that's gonna take a couple minutes to dry. So if you're painting um, around your bridge, you wanna make sure that that white is dry and it's not gonna cover it 100%, but what you've done now is it's like primer and it's covered up the majority of it. And then when you do add other colors to it, it's going to cover it up completely. But that's a good question. And I love white um, for that purpose is to kind of just white it out. And see, you can't really tell. And once I add the, the water under the bridge, it's literally water under the bridge. 
my gosh. I walked right into that one. All right. Do you guys need a couple more minutes? I don't want to rush you, but I want to make sure that you are on pace here. All right. Cool. Let's keep moving. Um, all right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start painting the trees. So we're going to ignore the bridge. However, don't paint over it. You, this is your um, blueprint, right? So when you start doing your trees, you kind of stop before you get to the bridge. But now you know where you know your trees kind of stop and start. All right, let's use a little black. So don't use a lot. Um, you just need a tiny, tiny bit of black. So get mine open here. And I'm going to put my black as far away from the white um, just so that you don't get a lot of gray happening. So I'm just using a little corner of my palette there, just a little tiny bit of black. And I'm going to start mixing some nice dark auburn tones for all the trees in the background. All right. Okay, so I've got my brown that I mixed earlier, right? I'm going to add, actually, let's do this, black and red. Everybody mix a little bit of black into some red. You know, so sorry if I missed this. Are we still using the small brush? Yes, good question. Whatever tiny brush that you have there, that's what you want. Yeah, that's gonna work. So it's gonna be like 90% red, 10% black, or maybe 80, 20, but you really wanna get like this nice auburn color here. I hope you could see that okay. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna add a little bit of water to, um, to that mixture. So black, red, a little bit of water. And then you want to make sure that you get your paint, um, your paintbrush nice and pointy. So as you're rolling your paint on your brush, you want to maintain that really nice sharp point on your, um, on your small brush there. And then what you're going to do is um, find your middle, your center. So it's not the center of the bridge, it's the center of the canvas. And that's where you're going to start making I'm going to hold this up close so you can see. You're just going to be very thin little lines and moving them upward. So try not to push really hard on your brush. You want to just make it really nice and light pressure. Oh, somebody's yeah. muted. If you don't mind yourself, if you're not asking a question, just because it gets super loud. Excellent, thank you. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making little squiggly lines here. And they're sort of small in the center. And then as I start moving outward, they start to get a little bit longer, a little bit longer. But again, that bridge is keeping us um, on point, right? That's where our guide is. Hey, uh, Vanessa, I had a question. Um, we kind of lost connection. So can you tell us which colors to mix for this color? Sure. It's black, red, and a little bit of water. Okay. Um, so you want it to look like maybe like cherry wood or like a, a really dark wine almost. Um, and then it's okay to even have like two shades. So when I went in for more paint, I added just a little extra black and I really like the way that looks. So yeah, you can add, um, you know, a little extra black to really get that nice darkness. And then as you move out towards the edge of the canvas, you want to make those a little bit longer. And they're not straight, they're squiggly. So you don't want your hand to be straight here. You want it to be, you know, get some movement going in there. 
nice and long there at the end. So something like this. And then once you get that side done, you're gonna just keep doing this on the other side of your canvas until you get to the edge. Um, here's a little trick, okay? I'm gonna show you guys this because we're going to start hitting some snow drifts here. That's where the, uh, you know, the bridge has a, a nice like collection of snow happening here, but the trees are behind the snow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna create any shape line that you want on this right side and then move up from there. All right, so that way you don't have to add so much white to cover up um, any of this darkness here. You'll be able to cover it up in one coat. Nice tall trees. When your paint starts to look like crayon, you need water. So add a little bit of water to that. Make sure that you've got a nice consistency. How tall do you want your trees? So let's take a look at the original. We're not painting these two trees yet. We're painting the ones back here, right? But look, some of these trees um, are almost to the top of your canvas. So don't be afraid to really give some of those lines some height, all right? And I forget to do that myself because I get so caught up in making the, the brush strokes right that I'm not really paying attention to how high up I want some of them. So I will go back and say, okay, this, this tree right here, he's about this tall. So I'm gonna really extend that one and then a few next to him. But again, you kind of wanna have the ones here in the middle, they're small because they're far away. We're looking at a front view where all these are, you know, at a distance. So these are closer to us. That's the goal anyway. All right, it is uh, 46 minutes after the hour. So let's do another um, two minutes of tree lines and then we will move on to the next step. All right, any questions so far? Are you feeling good? All right, just hold this up so you can see.
Don't worry if your lines are super thick. We're going to put a bunch of leaves on these trees, so you're not going to be able to see any detailed line work, okay? It's very hard to make skinny little lines like this unless, you know, you've had some practice and a really um, small brush. It's, it's difficult, but don't get caught up in that. We're going to make a mess of these trees in a minute, and it'll be fun. It'll be a fun kind of mess. All right, so I'm going to find one that looks kind of like it. Here's a good example of why you should keep your brush in the water. So my daughter likes to paint and doesn't like to clean up. So look, I can't even like run my fingers through the bristles because she destroys my brushes. She's a great painter, but she's lazy. <laughs> So that's why. Keep him in the water. That, that's going to happen. Um, let me grab some of these here. All right. Here we go. I feel like this brush looks a lot like what you guys have. So I'm going to use this brush here. All right. <clears throat> so you've got your, your tree trunks. And what we want to do now is we're going to add some... Uh, some leaves, right? And what I want to do is I really only want to use the very tips of the brush. And I'm just going to barely, and this is important, don't oversaturate your brush. I'm just going to barely dip my brush into that same color I was using for the trunks. So I've got just a tiny bit of paint on there. And then I'm going to start on an edge, in case I don't like it. It's not in the middle of the canvas here, but I'm just gonna start on the edge and then look at that. Hope you can see this, but if you just very lightly, not oversaturate your brush and just kind of start pushing, stippling it on there. Um, and when you run out of paint, pick up a little bit more and stipple it on there. This is gonna take a, a few minutes. So if you guys wanna unmute and chat while you're doing this, this is a good time to do that. But what you wanna do is maintain um, the look of the trees, right? So you wanna kind of have some roundness here. And here's another trick. You kinda of wanna turn your brush and move it in crazy different directions so that you don't get that same pattern over and over again. So you wanna just kind of move your brush flip it upside down, sideways, and get lots of different variation in there. Did, what color did you tell us to use on this? Oh, sure, it's uh, black and red. Oh, uh, so it's the same color as the trees? Yes, it is the same color as the trees. Um, I might have, like once we go over this with one layer, I might have you guys mix a couple more shades of brown, but let's just start with this as a base. And you guys can go ahead and uh, if you if if you want to unmute and chat, like say what you got to say and then like remute yourself. Um, if it gets too loud, you guys kind of know how to gauge that. I feel like most of you are, some of you are parents and you know when it gets too loud. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Mine was looking better when my daughter was helping me. As soon as I took over, I've gone downhill. I've gone right. downhill. Bring her back. Just kidding. I'm sure it looks fine. Um, don't worry. We'll get you there. We're all our own like harshest critic in art, okay? So don't feel bad, it's totally okay. I am, um, I would say I, I don't even finish like half of the paintings I do because I get so mad at myself. And then I realize, you know what? It's, it's paint on a canvas, like it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to look hand done. 
And ironically, I work on a computer all day and I try to mimic uh, something that should, I want it to look like it was done by hand on a computer. So it's like, we're never satisfied, right? So look how long, I've been doing this for two minutes and I've only gotten this little section covered. So this does take a, a few minutes. Um, I am gonna set a timer for about 10 minutes. So give yourself a goal to go all the way across in, um, in that 10 minute time frame. And then after this, we'll take a little um, break, we'll stretch our legs and we'll show our work. Can you go all the way down to the end of this? Of the uh, that's a really good question. I'm actually not, and thank you for, for asking that. I'm going to only go to about right here. Okay, so imagine like trees only have leaves about, what would you say, like four feet above the trunk? So we don't want to go leaves all the way down. These aren't, um, these aren't coniferous, conifers, evergreen. trees, evergreens. Yeah, th these are real like maybe aspens or something. So we don't want to have leaves all the way down to the bottom. That's a great question. So you really kind of want to keep it um, up three quarters and up. What would your advice be if the, I guess the uh, trunk of the tree is too thick? I wouldn't worry about that. That's also a good question. Look at this. I'm going to hold up the original. Look at that. Look at that dense forest in the trunk. Like we're basically going to go over that with some really dark, dark, almost black shades there. So don't worry about the trunks not being perfect at the base. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. If you want to try this stippling with a slightly bigger brush, if you get more done quickly, um, you're welcome to give that a try. I know that this brush um, is great for the small trees kind of in the center because you are you got more control and you're not going too crazy. But if you want to switch it up and do a little bit bigger brush, you can do that. Quick question on the color. My, my uh, trees are really purplish. How do I get a little bit of the purple out? Um, hmm. Did you just use red and black? I used red and black. Uh, and was there something else I was supposed to use in there too? No, actually, um, if yours is looking a little bit purple, what you could do is add a little yellow to it and that will kind of neutralize that violet tone. So Got try it. to add a little bit and just use a small amount and just keep adding as you need it. Kind of like when you're cooking, you don't want to go too crazy with salt. You add it a little at a time. So just add a little yellow at a time and see if that corrects it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Really be careful that you don't like cover up the blue sky behind your trees too much. Like you want some of that sky to peek through. So have some control and not go too hard um, with the pressure and cover up too much. Okay, can I just be honest and say trees are hard? Yes, that is absolutely right. Um, it's a little bit tricky and, um, you know, we, I would say the majority of the um, paintings that we do actually have trees, but when you're painting trees that are um, far away and they're so, um, it creates a kind of a different kind of a, a challenge there. Um, but yeah, I would concur that this is not an easy painting. Um, so you can blame whoever chose it tonight. Well, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> the iron 
beauty is I, I picked this one because I didn't think it had a lot of trees. Like I did one recently, not recently, but yeah. where we did big evergreens and I was like, whoa, that's much more than I thought. So yeah, yeah. but you blame me. that's okay. Well, the, the, the trade-off is that this is an amazing, thing. It's beautiful, um, but you got to put in the work, right? Um, and I love to start like once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to push through it real quick. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's tricky. And I would recommend taking a, a moment to stand up and look at it from across the room because that's really what a painting uh, looks like. Like when you're looking at art in your house, you're not going to stand six inches away from it and stare at it. You're going to see it in passing 10 feet away and everything always better 10 feet away. Can we see a close-up of your trees? Of course. So there's the edge there. And now I'm kind of working my way to the left. I'm trying to fill in. Reminding myself to keep turning my brush. Don't put too much paint on it. Do is I really want to get this dark, move this stuff out of the way here, um, this dark, super dark um, shadow in here on our painting here. So um, the best way to create that color is just to take your burgundy or whatever you use for your trees and your leaves, and then you're just going to add a little extra black to it, maybe a little water. To it. And I apologize that my brush looks like this, but it just totally came off of it, but it still works. Um, and then <clears throat> let's, let's test it out. Let's see. We want it to be a little bit darker than the tree um, itself, but just slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press and move upward. Okay, so this is kind of where you have to have a little control here. So I'm just pressing that color in here at the base. And then I'm just gonna like, let it flare out and, and fade away a little bit. All right, so like I said, all of those tree trunks are getting covered up. Um, you just kind of want to float it upward, but you don't want it to be a hard, hard line. Like you don't want it to be like a thick line going across it. It's got to look like it's faded. So you just want to press and push upward. Like this get it nice and filled in there stay in those lines because everything below this color is white snow so you want to kind of keep it clean you're going to do this um all the way across um except for kind of the center area we want to keep those trees um nice and light so i'm only going to come um, if you wouldn't mind, everybody, just check to see if it or not. It's got a lot of background noise. So just kind of take a look and see if, um, if you need to be muted. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to in a little close, but I'm not going to do the center here. I don't want to paint that color here. And then on the other side, I'll do the same thing. Okay, excellent. The goal is to make all your brush strokes really soft and no hard lines, just really happy, fluffy, cold, desolate snow. That's happy though. Hey there, what colors are we using again? The same as the leaves? Yes, same color, but I added a little more black, okay? Because we want that depth and that black is gonna get us um, that really nice shadowy look. So you're going to add a little extra black. Not too much. We don't want jet black. Um, it's really going to look heavy against all that white snow. So it's just very subtle, but slightly more black. And you could see it on mine, slightly more black than, than the trees.
And now I'm working on the other side on where the bridge is. Where that bridge is, I'm just going to follow that line upward, pull it up. As I move towards that center, I'm just stippling now. I don't want it to go too dark and I want it to kind of fade. And I made, that's a little happy accident right there. I'll cover that guy up later. So we're gonna give the trees a break, let them dry. This is actually gonna be a really fun step. I think you're gonna enjoy it. So I'm gonna hold this up and you're gonna see Check out these cool brush strokes. So you should have a brush that will look kind of like that. So if you, if I were to mine these, it's just basically like, right? And then you can flip your brush the other way and paint. So what you really want to try to do is make the bridge look like bricks, right? And that is just that brush stroke. It's just once, and I'll tell you what colors you'll need, but you're going to press and then lift, press, lift maybe flip your brush, press, lift, and then you go all the way across the bridge. We'll start at the top and move our way kind of down. Um, and so what you're going to use is basically the same colors that you use for your trees and some white, um, but you don't want to over mix your colors. All right, so here's how I'm going to do it. Here's my palette. Um, I'm just, just so that you guys can see it from the beginning, I'm going to just start over. All right, I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna push it right there on my palette and take some blue, push that there, some red, some yellow. Yeah, we'll start with that. All right, so I'm gonna take the red and I'm just gonna mix red and yellow. I'm gonna throw in the blue. Now I've automatically, I'm just mixing all of it. Now I've got brown. If your brown looks a little bit too blue, you can add more yellow, that's okay. So I've got one shade of brown there, okay. Then I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna go over to the white. Now I've got two shades of brown, okay. Um, then I can just kind of scrape some of that off. Um, I'm going to pick up some more yellow. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm just, with what's left on my brush, now I've got like a third shade of brown. Maybe I add a little more red. Okay, so what I've done really quickly is I've just mixed three neutral earth tone shades with basically using all of those colors, red, blue, yellow, white. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Um, which colors did you start out with? I'm sorry. That's okay, red. So I used like a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow and white. Okay, so I mixed red, white and blue here. Oh, okay. Then I took the white glob and I mixed the brush with that and I've got like a really light um, tan and then I've got like this middle tone and I've added a little extra yellow to this one just to get it a little warmer. Thank you. You're welcome. So then once you have your three um, browns, here's what you can do. Kind of get all the paint off there. So I've got my brush and it's in the middle tone. 
then I can kind of take a little corner of my light um, brown and then a little corner of my dark. So then my brush looks like this. Just take a moment, look at your screen and see that. And then, so now I've got all those different browns on here. Then when I come over to my painting and I come over here, now I've got, might be a little too sharp, but if I keep flipping my brush, I can kind of make them look like bricks. See that? If it's too defined, you can kind of just go over it a little bit. And then if it's too, maybe get a little extra dark in there. And then I can just kind of go over it with a dark brown. So it's gonna look kind of like that. This is gonna take a bit of time, so be patient. Um, and just kind of play around with those three shades of brown. Constantly go, come back to your palette and pick up, say, oh, that's too light. I'm gonna add a little darker. And you wanna keep adding in a mix of those three so that you get like some nice variety happening. So going back in for dark, and then when my brush starts to get low, maybe I go in for the light, like that. And so yeah, that's what you basically wanna do all the way across. And you don't want, <clears throat> like here, I've got too much of the same color. So what I might do, I'm just come down here, pick up some that darkest brown and go over it with dark. Follow your bridge pattern. Just like that. So I made one row. <clears throat> if your colors start getting muddy on your brush, take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then start over. That way you don't have a muddy mess on your brush, you can start fresh by picking up those three colors. I find the best thing to do is just, if you get a medium tone brown, just pick up some dark and get it a little bit, um, give it more contrast. Here's another cool thing you can do, kind of skip over. I actually try this, this is actually cool. So like, I'm gonna skip a few areas because I've got the same color, right? Skip. Then I can come in between those areas with like completely different color. And now I've got some nice variation because I skipped over, aha. Uh -huh. I just discovered that and that works, so give it a try. All right. This will keep you guys busy for a couple minutes. Um, I'm just going to go rinse out my water jar, so I will be right back. This is my dog who wants to be a part of the painting class today. <laughs> so I'm just going to let him say hello, and then I'm going to take him downstairs. So, Vanessa. Yeah? Talk to us about brown again. I'm struggling. I haven't touched my bridge because I can't get out of purple. Okay, so... Um, Huh, I'm wondering if, if you guys are getting some purple tones, you wanna <clears throat> basically neutralize it with some yellow, okay? So what's happening is you've got way too many cool tones and you have to kind of bring it in with yellow. So I would add more yellow until you get that. Um, if you start to get too green, um, you need more red. Um, it's a balancing act, um, and unfortunately, because you know we don't have a a brown um, in our kits, that's that's why you have to kind of make your brown. Yep. Um, so uh, again, just keep playing around with it until you find that sweet spot. Um, my 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 browns on my bridge are very um, 
almost like an army green. So um, if I wanted to warm it up a little bit, I would add a little bit more red, right? So it's just a matter of finding that right mixture. Um, and now my paints have kind of dried out, so I'm gonna wake them up. A little bit of water, kind of get that going again. Um, but don't worry, um, bridges actually during certain times of the day kind of look purplish because of the uh, light coming in. So we'll just say that your bridge has a little bit more of a um, cool sky that's behind it. So that's why we'll go with that. But I'm sure it looks fine. As long as you get some variation in there, you should be fine. Different um, tones. Vanessa, is your dog a shih tzu? Um, he's a shih tzu. So he's a uh, half shih tzu and poodle. So cute. <laughs> Thank you. He is such a sweetheart. And he's just so, um, he's just a people person. Like he will run up to anybody and he'll just give you lots of kisses. And he never barks. He's super quiet. So uh, yeah, he's a sweetie. Thank you. He wants to be in here so bad. Like it's causing him <laughs> so much stress, but I'm afraid he's going to jump up and knock over my paint. So he's got he's to hang out downstairs with the family for a while. Vanessa, I think I have the same mix, but mine barks. Yours is working? No, my dog. Oh. <laughs> I think I have the same mixed dog. Oh, he's just kind of quiet, but he's also very young. So that might be why he hasn't like found his bark yet. Her How old bark, is your dog? Uh, six months old. So oh, mine is eight years old, and, but oh. he loves people. Yeah. He only barks when he sees a squirrel or oh. someone is at the front door. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, my dog's not quite barking at people at the front door, but he'll bark at the cat and squirrels too. Yes, we have so many squirrels. But they're really good dog and easy to train. Oh my gosh, so smart. He'll ring the bell to go potty already. You're right. They're very smart. And he's... Mine does not ring the bell. He just kind of circle around you and, and whines. Oh, well, that's still telling you. Um, I just tried the bell and he picked it up in like probably a week. Um, and sometimes he'll trick me. He's like, I just want to go play. I don't need to go potty. So he'll ring the bell <laughs> just to go outside. But... Uh, really cute and he shakes he has his little paw that shakes and he hit us down yeah he learned a lot of stuff pretty pretty quick smart dog poodles are smart and shih tzus are too all right so i've kind of made like a big mess of kinds of bricks on mine um but i kind of like it it kind of gives it a very holiday look it almost looks like like a christmas bridge to me because I've got some more reds in there now, but I like it. I'm just kind of throwing in a little extra white here and there and black and just giving it some, some variation. There's no right or wrong. Did you make the painting on the right? I uh, know I did not. Um, one of our artists that worked for us, um, her name is Cynthia, and she did that originally. Um, she's like a very accomplished painter and very, um, you know, ha has a lot of uh, details in her paintings, um, which are really lovely to look at. And sometimes it's a little bit more of a challenge sometimes because there's so many little details, but the end result is worth it. So I like that about her paintings. You might be able to, if you go to our website, there's always like a art, artist bio link. Um, you're welcome to, to check out our artists that work at our studio. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding in just a very, very light tan kind of randomly over my bricks. I wasn't quite able to achieve the tight, tidy look that she has. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to try, but I am still gonna add like some nice variety in my brush strokes. So um, don't worry too much. If, if yours doesn't look exactly like the original, 
Mine doesn't either. That's okay. This is about as close as I'm going to get with the time we have. So I'm good with it. All right. Do you guys feel like you need another minute or two or can we move on? I'm going to give you guys another minute, let's say 634, like 34 minutes after the hour, and then we're going to just keep moving because we still got um, not a lot to do, but we've, we've still got a, a good amount to paint. So I don't want to spend too much time on the bridge. All right, let's start painting the water. That's going to be fun and you're going to really love the colors that we're going to mix here. Um, so you're basically just going to need uh, blue and white and maybe a little bit of yellow. But let me test it out first because I don't want to tell you wrong. So I'm just going to mix a new color here. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to use the biggest brush that I have, um, this guy right here. So whatever brush you were using for the bridge, just when you're done, drop it into your water. So I'm just going to pick up white and some blue. And I'm not going to overmix. Watch how I did that. I did white and blue, and then I just kind of swirled it around a little. And then I am going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow only because I don't want my water under the bridge to look exactly like my sky. So adding just a tiny bit of yellow is going to keep it from looking just like the sky. So added a little yellow. Well, I don't want that. That's really green, right? We don't want our bridge water to look like it's polluted. So again, I'll just correct. Mixing paint is all about correcting. I would say half of what painting is, is correcting something you just did. So I'm adding, oh, that's kind of what I want here. It's almost like a... Um, what colors are we supposed to use again? So I'm using blue, a tiny bit of yellow and white. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And I mean a tiny bit very, very small amount of yellow, just barely to get that, um, that blue tone a little bit lighter. And then once you get your blue, then I'm going to add white to lighten it up a little bit. Let's say there. Okay. I like that. And I'm not going to over blend. So I'm going to take my brush. And so you want to sort of imagine that your bridge There's water under it, right? So we got to make sure that that water is right under that bridge. So with a small brush, and I'm just going to do this real quick so that you could see, I'm going to make like a little cut in line here. Like that's where my water line is. That's all going to be water under my bridge. So it's not a straight line. It's kind of at an angle and it's real jagged because we've got the snow banks on, on those sides there, right? So that's where my borders are. Everything underneath here is all water. And when you paint your water, you're gonna use a bigger brush and you're gonna go side to side like this. And you're going to make sure that you can really see 
some of the um, the line work here. We don't want to overblend. I'm just going side to side. It's okay if you go right over your line a little bit, but try to stay within that perimeter there. Side to side. You start to see all these beautiful lighter colors there. Pick up a little more white if you want. I'm getting real close to that edge that I created. So when I get to that um, edge, I can come in with a smaller brush and then just work the details with a small brush. If it starts to look too green, pick up solid blue. Look at that, I can correct it because it's wet and I can fix it. And I really like that deep blue in there. So more of that if it starts to look too green for you. See, so just adding pure blue to this mixture, see what that does. Really important you keep that directional brush stroke cross, not up and down or blotchy like we were doing the sky. Brush work is really important because it tells a story. Like that's telling a cloud story, a tree story, a bridge story, a water story, and it's all interpreted by the brush stroke itself. And then details, take a tiny brush, some of those same colors, and then I can just touch up under the bridge and in the snow area. We're almost done actually. We've got the snow and then just two trees up front, some optional birds. If you wanna add them, I'll show you later. Um, I feel like you probably need another minute or two. So let's go another three minutes to finish your water and get all of the details in. I'm gonna hold mine up close so you can see. So I've gone right up to the edge there. Don't worry about the, you know, if you have a gap under that bridge area, you can close it up best you can. Um, so I'm gonna just go in and kind of close it up, but I'm also gonna add a little extra uh, shadowing to the bridge, so don't worry if it's not perfect.
All right. Okay, so next step is the snow. Um, so I, I want to make sure that I have pure white. So hopefully you have some space on your palette, but if you need to grab an extra palette or something to put some fresh white on, you wanna make sure that you um, have a clean brush, whatever your largest brush is, make sure that that's clean. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of white on um, a paper plate here. And I would say you need about, uh, not this much, I poured a lot, but about half of that maybe, okay? Um, a teaspoon maybe, a little bit over a teaspoon, that's perfect. Um, and then you're gonna just take your biggest brush. For me, I'm just grabbing a clean brush for the sake of time. And I'm going to paint snow be really careful with your water. You don't want to pick up any of that blue. So I'm gonna kind of try to go around it, but you wanna paint all of this bright white with a nice thick coat of white paint. And I'll tell you why, because what we're gonna do is while this is wet, we're gonna add a little bit of snow shadow on it, which I really like to do when the paint is wet because it really creates a nice soft, um, blended look. I'm just going to take my brush, get it real close to that water while it's still wet. So it seems redundant and silly to just paint white on white canvas, but here's why. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of blue, just pure blue, just a little tiny dot, okay? Then I'm going to create a little snow drift right here with just blue, very small amount. And then I just fade it down. So that just creates a nice shadow. See, subtle, but when you look at it a little closer, you see it. You can do that. <clears throat> over on this uh, little snow drift too, if you want. What size uh, brush are you using for that? Oh, I'm using a medium, so like not too big, not a detail brush, not a big clumsy brush, but like a good medium to small. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So there's that snow drift there. And then what you want to do is get that brush cleaned up. You're going to do the same thing on the other side of the bridge. So white first. This is also a good way to kind of clean up any um, little details that you need to clean there by just cutting into the water. Being careful that you don't blend that water in with the white if it's still wet. And then a very subtle shadow in here like this line and then soften it up. When you do the shadow, do you um, paint all the way to the bottom? Um, do you mean the bottom of the canvas? Well, like when you, you make your line and then do you paint it from that line all the way down? Kind of. Um, so I want it to fade back into white eventually. So it starts off very dark or darker and then gradually gets lighter, lighter until it's back to pure white again. 
So it's like you blend it downward and you don't want to use too much blue. Um, if your snow starts, yeah, if your snow starts to look like water, then you know you use too much blue. Then you can go back and uh, go over it with some white to bring that back to fresh white snow. Oh, here's another. On this bridge here, so see how on the original, the bridge is being covered up by some snow. See that? That's like that snow just drifted up against the bridge. So you want to create that look on that side. So I'm just going to take that same brush with some white and I'm going to, oh, you put snow on top of your bridge too. I mean, you can really just add a bit of snow on top. But then what you want to do is kind of cut into that bridge a little bit. So I'm just taking white and I'm covering up just a little bit of that bridge because I want it to look like it's covered in snow. It's pushed up against it. And I'm laying this white on there pretty thick. I want to get that coverage on there. And then I can just take some of that white and go right over the bridge. And over here, you can see that it's almost like a triangle, that angle of snow. So you can almost even take your white, go right over your bridge like this, like frosting on a cupcake, right? Whoops, a lot of frosting for me. <laughs> and then I want to give it a little bit of texture. So I'm just jotting on some more white paint there. It's a very snowy day, lots of snow on my bridge. I made a little mistake there, but I don't care. I'm just going to go right over it with extra snow, cover it up. And again, I'm using my medium brush, pure white. If your bridge paint isn't dry yet, be careful that you don't, um, you know, do this part yet until it's more dry. Otherwise, your snow is going to get a little bit muddy looking, which is okay for a first coat if you want to go back and fix that. That's okay. Hey, I have a question. Um, I've noticed in some of the other paintings, acrylic kind of dries out or fades out eventually. Is there a trick to stop that? Oh, good question. Um, so unfortunately, acrylic does dry fast. If you have a spray bottle, a water bottle, um, you can spray your paint every few minutes and that'll keep it from drying out. Um, otherwise, what I find is when it's in a pile like this, See, it's like a glob. That's going to stay wet much longer than if your paint's spread out like this. So it's just a matter of almost like rationing your paint and only using what you need so that all of your paint doesn't dry out. Um, but you can take a, a bit of water and just, if you don't have a spray bottle, you can take some water on a brush and just shake it on there and stir it up. And that should, that should revive it. Um, and that only works for like a couple of hours. And then once that paint is completely dry, there's no bringing it back. Sorry, I think I wanted to ask fade out. Like eventually let's, we paint today and after two months, this fades out. So how to stop that? Um, fades out. Uh, do you mean like adding more to it later? Yeah, I kind of had an acrylic painting in my house and some had gifted it to me and I eventually saw that it, the colors. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Was it by a window or UV light? Uh, no, it was in a large room with probably 
some indirects and light. <laughs> yeah, uh, light will fade acrylic, but usually it takes like years. I mean, they say that a good acrylic painting should last like 500 years. So it could be the quality of the paint, it could be the surface, it could be like environmental factors, light coming in, um, all of those kinds of things could fade out your paint. Um, but um, yeah, that usually you have pretty good quality with acrylic. Um, a lot of the paints or the, the paintings we have at the studio, we haven't noticed any fading, um, but the ones by the windows we have. Yeah, the sun will eventually eat through anything. So don't put these outside. I mean, unless you want to. I actually have paintings outside. I have a fence and I have so many canvases and paintings that sometimes I just nail them up on, on the fence and they've been out there for, some of them have been out there for like eight years <laughs> and they're still fine. Um, they're not paintings I care a whole lot about. They're just kind of like cute, whimsical stuff. Um, but yeah, they've been okay. Good question. I messed up here, so I'm just going to touch it up with my finger here. All right. Uh, let's see. So we've got one more step, and that is going to be adding in the tree here. Actually, I should say we have one more color, but a few steps. So brown is what we're going to need, right? You guys are pros at mixing brown now. You're going to need some to fill in these two trees. This shadow under the bridge. And then optional birds. But again, you don't have to do these. Some people don't want the birds, but I'll show you how to do them if you want to, okay? So let's, uh, I feel like you can finish up your snow in the next two minutes and then we will um, move on to that. Uh, if you're not doing anything right now, stretch your legs, um, stand up, look at something else across the room for a couple minutes because just that constant panorama, like that constant close-up vision, look at something else, rest your eyes. And then we'll get back to the happy trees here in just a minute. In the meantime, I am gonna start mixing my brown while you guys are still working. All right, here we go. I'm gonna mix uh, my brown, black, um, red, blue, yellow, maybe a little bit of black. I kind of want a dark brown. I want it to, not too dark, but not um, too light either. Wow. 
Um, if you have a slightly pointy brush like this in your kit, I would just use one of these. Um, I'm going to use this uh, number three, it's called, but I don't know what numbers you guys have. But um, I just want something that's not flat, like the bridge brush we used. Um, I want something that is got some point to it so that we can paint some branches. Just adding a little red to my brown. Go ahead and start mixing up your browns. And if it starts to get too dark, add a little white. I'm adding just a little white and that really made a difference. So I'm good with this brown here. All right, so right behind those shadowy um, snow banks, that's right where I'm gonna put this tree here. So um, the way I create this big tree is I'm going to start, actually let's start, there's two ways. You can either start from the bottom, press, and go upward, or you can start from the top and pull it down. I am going to start from the bottom and just press my brush flat. I'm gonna try to hold it up so you can see. I'm gonna paint <laughs> sideways here. I'm gonna press and then make kind of a wiggly trunk. And then as I come out towards the sky, kind of fades out into into the sky there. See how skinny I made that? And then I'm going to make like a Y shape. So branch out here and come out like that. So it's like one and two. Then, and I'm doing this quickly, you don't have to move as fast as I do, but I'm just going to take my brush and just start making more branches out of those two, like this. And then each branch might have two more little branches and each one of those has two branches and that's just the nature of trees. But the further out they are, the skinnier they are. So you wanna make sure that as you move out, um, away from your trunk, those little branches get skinnier and skinnier. So, and that's all about your consistency of the thickness of your paint and the pressure that you're painting. Whoop, I'm gonna do a second tree. This one's going to be right next to his best friend. And same thing. Little offshoots on that main tree. anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Just going to hold this up a little closer if you need to see it up close.
All right. And I'm going to give you guys, I don't want to go over too long. So I'm, I'm going to give the next instruction um, here in about, oh, let's, let's say about three minutes. So finish up your trees and then make sure you have enough of that brown because we've got just a couple more steps, the birds and the shadow under the bridge. So I'm just going to grab some water. And we'll come back at uh, 7.07 .07 our time. All right. So with that brown, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create uh, like a little triangle inward. So it's like a thick, this is the shadow that's coming under the bridge there, but it's like a, a slice, right? That's gonna give it that dimension. Then with whatever's left over on my brush, if I have any gaps or anything I wanna fill in, I can do that with this little brush here. Now, if you are um, comfortable in painting and you want to elevate it and you want to paint those ducks that are flying, um, I'm going to show you two ways, okay? I'm going to show you the hard way first and then the easy way second. So if you are ambitious and you really want to get some detail in there, you're basically going to almost like make an upside down letter T. And then you're going to fill in that top area in the shape of a wing. And then you're going to create that front part of that T into the beak. This is hard to do with a, even the tiniest of brushes. So don't beat yourself up if it's too difficult. But that's basically a, a nice little duck. Now, if you want to make it super easy, the way I like to teach these in, in class, you can just do this. Same effect, <laughs> okay? So 
decide what kind of person you want to be and then just run with it. Do I want to be meticulous and paint a detailed duck or do I want to be carefree and just have my ducks far away? No right or wrong, but everybody falls into one of those, right? You can do a mixture of both. So maybe I'll do a couple of these guys up close and maybe his wings are pushed forward. Maybe like that. I'm gonna call that good. I don't wanna do too many. Now, if you want to add more detail to this, you can keep going all night long. I'm not sure if you all work tomorrow, but if you wanna keep adding details, um, some of the things that you can do is you can add a little bit of brown underneath the shadow or the bridge as a shadow here. I'm just gonna do this here real quick. So the, wa the water's reflecting the bridge a little bit. Um, very, very softly, don't go too crazy. You don't wanna add a ton of brown to your water, but you're trying to mirror that bridge. This is optional if you wanna do this. And then maybe the, uh, the tree has a little bit of a shadow here. Now I know I'm going very fast, but you know these are just things that you can think about if you wanna stay a little bit longer at your house and you know, just extend out the night by yourself and just add a few more details. That's what I'm showing you here. Okay, touch up. Um, you could, here's another cool thing you could do. You can add a little bit of white snow to some of your branches if you wanted to. Just a little bit of white snow, just on a few. See all those little tiny details that you can do to really bring your painting to life. So I'm just gonna stop about here and just tell you guys how to clean up and how to wash your brushes. Um, the way I clean up when I'm using a disposable palette like this, I just throw it away. Um, normally I use a reusable palette and let the paint dry and then I just peel it off in one satisfying pull, um, but you can throw that away if you're not using one of those. Your brushes should be in water whenever you're not using them and then you wanna just go to the sink and scrub them. If you have Dawn dish soap, hand soap, I feel like you guys are professional hand washers at this point. You wash your brushes the same way, like at least 20 seconds and get all that paint out until that water runs clear. And then when, after you wash your brushes, this is important, you put them upside down in a cup so that the bristles are up. Otherwise they're going to dry in a funky shape because of the, um, the water. So bristles up and that's how they'll dry. Um, your painting itself, will take about 20 minutes to an hour to dry and then like two days for it to be like solid dry. Um, but in an hour, you're good. Um, unless you've got very thick paint, that's going to take longer. Um, if you have a cat like I do, don't leave your painting on the floor or somewhere where your pet can jump up on it. <laughs> it's happened to me. Sometimes what I do is I'll take a picture down and then I'll hang my painting up because I know it's safe on the wall. Um, Another thing you can do later um, when you want to is you can paint the edges of your canvas. I left mine white, but if you wanted to go back and just sort of add in some blue or some trees, um, another thing that looks really cool is just painting the outside edge all black. That gives it like a really nice modern look. I love doing that with my paintings. Um, and then you wanna sign your artwork. If you have a marker or a small paintbrush, just sign your work, sign it on the back. Um, put 2020 in big block red letters and then say like never again, um, whatever, get creative. Um, <laughs> 
2020 forever, never again. Um, whatever you want, this is your painting. If you wanna give it to somebody for the holiday season, that's okay too. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you all did an amazing job. Thank you so much.